Welcome back to The Bank Guide. I'm your bank guy, Colin. And today is another video in the 5-Minute Logic Expert Series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing, and mastering in Logic in 30 days. And today we're talking about flex time, more specifically the different flex time modes. So flex time is an algorithmic basic editor that allows you to stretch and shorten audio so that it can fit where it should. So basically if you hit a note and it was a little bit too long and you just need to shorten a little bit, you can do that and get everything really timed up well. Now, if you haven't already seen my video on editing. I'll link to it above here. There I talk about why I don't use flex time for most of my editing. And it comes down to that it is algorithmic. And sometimes you can kind of perceive that it's affecting the audio a little bit. That said, sometimes it's the best thing and can really make things work in a way that you just can't with the type of editing that I talked about in that video. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely go check that out. But let's go and talk about flex time modes because as I said, it's algorithmic and they design different algorithms for the different types of things that you might be using it on. So for example, they have a different algorithm for something like an acoustic guitar or piano than they would for a vocal or a bass guitar because a vocal or bass guitar is typically only singing or playing one note at a time while an acoustic uh, and a piano are polyphonic they're playing multiple notes at a time so which flex time mode you select could make it sound a lot more natural make it work make it be more transparent and it's pretty amazing when it does work what it can do now, if you're coming from GarageBand, you do not have the flexibility in GarageBand to select which mode you get. It just defaults to it. It selects it for it based on what it thinks it probably needs. And that actually happens initially in Logic as well. So we'll look at that in just a second. But Logic allows you to then select the mode that would make most sense. So let's go and jump into Logic and take a look at this. Now, there's a couple different ways to show flex time. My preferred way is to bring up the editor window. To do that, you hit E on the keyboard or press this little pencil button up here. And then to engage flex time, you just hit this little flex time indicator here. It's going to prompt you, do you want to turn on flex time? We're going to go and do that. Typically, it'll take a little bit of time to process it, but I think I've already processed it in this song. And then it's going to prescribe what it thinks would be best for that channel. So in this case, it's saying flex time slicing. And you may have run into this before where you think, oh, I'm going to use flex time to fix this. And you go to do that and you pull the note where you want it to go and it creates this big old gap instead of stretching the audio like you expect it to or like you've seen it do in other people's YouTube videos. And that's because it's doing the flex time slicing. Now, if you're in GarageBand, unfortunately, it's extremely frustrating. There's no way to get around it. It's just gonna do it and you can't change that mode. But because we're here in Logic, I could change it instead of being in slicing, I could change it to what would make more sense. Now, there's four main modes of flex time. There's monophonic, slicing that we're currently looking at, rhythmic and polyphonic. There's also speed and tempophone. We're not gonna cover those in today's video because they're really creative uses of flex time that could have their whole videos on each of them. And for the sake of time, we're just gonna focus on the main four, which are the main four you'd use for basic audio editing for most music production. So for this example here, this is a bass guitar. So I'd probably want monophonic, which means that's just playing one note at a time. So if I change it to monophonic, you'll see now it's gonna stretch out that note as opposed to slicing it like we saw before with slicing. So monophonic is gonna be best for bass guitar if it's a bass part that isn't doing like chords or anything crazy. Most bass lines are typically one note at a time. Uh, things like vocals will work pretty well with monophonic. Anything that's really just one note at a time, that's why you can, can think of it. If you're doing something like a piano or an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, then you're going to want polyphonic. That just means that multiple notes are being played at a time and the algorithm is gonna be a little bit better suited for that. Now, I have known people who swear up and down in Pro Tools that Pro Tools polyphonic algorithm sounds better on drums than the rhythmic algorithm. I don't know that I agree with that, but again, I just don't really love flex time or anything that's stretching audio in general. So maybe that's a bit of a personal preference, a personal bias. So I say that just to say, don't hesitate to try polyphonic on things that aren't necessarily polyphonic sources. Also drums are kind of technically polyphonic sources because like a snare and a cymbal are at two different pitches. So I could see that, that makes some sense to me. But that also brings me to the next example, which is rhythmic. Now rhythmic is exactly what you'd expect it to be. It is good for things like drums. <laughs> tambourines, anything like that that's mostly a rhythmic hit. Uh, you can see it doesn't slice here. It does stretch the audio where uh, slicing is actually leaving a gap. So depending on the source, I would use either slicing or rhythmic for rhythmic thing. So with the tambourine, for example, where it's kind of a short hit, I will often try slicing and see if I can get that to work 
on drums, slicing can get a little bit weird, and so rhythmic often has worked a little bit better for me. So those are the four main modes. I can't do an audio example for every single one of these, or this video would be 30 minutes long, and this is Five Minute Logic Expert. If you want me to do a longer video on it, I definitely can. But there's one more thing that you might notice here in this list, and that's flex pitch. Now, flex pitch is flex time and pitch correction in one, and can be a really powerful tool when working with things like vocals and actually bass guitar sometimes I'll use flex pitch on but we're going to say that for tomorrow's video so if you're curious about flex pitch definitely come back tomorrow we're going to compare it to the built-in pitch correction and in the meantime if you're struggling to get a mix that you're happy with inside logic flex time might be part of it getting a tighter edit but a big part of it is likely more the mixing side of things and I want to give you something to help with that I put together a completely free six-step checklist that just goes through the same six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them specifically in logic it's completely free from link in the description below it's really gonna help you out. I'm sure you've heard me say this before if you've seen any of the other 5-Minute Logic Expert series, but it really will help you out and it's completely free. So I wanna make sure that you get it. And before you go, I'd also love to hear from you. Did you know about the different modes in Flex Time? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with another 5-Minute Logic Expert.